All right, you guys, we have a returning guest for you guys. We have Alexi Vermulian. Um, if you guys have been paying attention to, I believe it's considered the Grand Prix series, right? Races um, that's been going on. He just crushed Leadville and Steamboat. And so that's what we're going to do a little recap on here today. How in the heck does someone podium weekend back to back, um, both at altitude? Goodness. Um <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on and diving into that with us today. Yeah. Thanks for having me back. Honored, honored to be back for a second time. Yeah. We, we had such a blast. Um, I have to, I want to say you were episode 64. I'll double check that. We'll link it in the show notes for the listeners. If you want to go back and listen to the first one. Um, but we are going to do a repeat. I think we did two truths and a lie last time as well. Yep. So we'll do a new two truths and a lie for our listeners today. I'll let you break that down uh, before we dive into all your fun nutrition and fueling for steamboat and leadville okay well hopefully i'm wiser than our first episode so now i have more <laughs> wisdom Perfect. um two truths and a lie um sbt was willie's first bike race ever oh uh i have seven more races in 2023 okay uh i'm getting another wiener dog oh Oh my goodness. How are you going to carry two, two wieners on your back? <laughs> they make double packs. They're so oh, cool. Really? Yeah. Oh my, are they side by side? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I think that's like a joke thing, but yeah. I think I would try. Oh my gosh. That would I be just great. can't imagine them like both getting annoyed and you're just in the yeah. middle. And I, yeah. That I can't annoy. I also have my girlfriend's back. So if he's yes. can carry one, there you go. That's I'll take a the good smaller call. one. Yeah, you're gonna have to like wait till the if you do get a new if that is true and you're getting a new one until they like even out wait too because you're gonna yeah. be like we're like so excited like you see all the like dachshund videos on the internet yeah. we see like the little one and the big one <laughs> it's gonna be great They're so good okay so I think that, that one's true now I think that one's true <laughs> um yeah. okay maybe so I'm good I'm gonna, at faking it yeah I'm gonna guess the first one which and I apologize for our listeners I told Alexi. I am probably going on five hours of sleep in the last two nights because we decided to foster and we have seven puppies in our house right now and a mom. So um, we're adjusting. But um, the first one I feel like was a lie, but don't tell us the answer. We will reveal it at the end for the listeners. Um, let's dive into racing this year. So I think, did we record last year? Or was it early? I this think year? it was early this year. I yeah. feel like I was in Tucson. It was like February. Okay. Okay. So going into this year and now yeah. it's been a minute since we chatted, how do you feel like your training and maybe nutrition, hydration prep, how has that changed since last year's like Leadville and Steamboat or has it? Um, I don't know. I don't know that it really has. Um, I think it's changed in a sense of I've tried to change with weather because I feel like this year mm. we've had a lot of different weather situations mm -hmm. yeah um, especially like you talked about the unbound this year compared to last year yeah um, but for the most part I think it's just been focusing on trying to stay hydrated I'm very bad at drinking off the bike I'm good on the bike but oh, I'm very okay. bad at like consistently into mm -hmm. into the weekend and not like waking up at 3 30 and chugging water oh okay um, yeah so uh yeah, there hasn't been much change, but I think that that also goes with things going well last year that you mm -hmm. don't tend to change very much. Yeah. Um, and the beginning of this year was a little rocky, just mm. nothing really hit the target. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that was more just like buckling down on what I'd done before. It wasn't anything, any big changes. Yeah, that's great. And yeah. from a training perspective, like, do you feel like any of that has evolved or was there, was it approached differently at all going into this year? Do you think? Yeah. Spoiler, spoiler alert. Keegan's won everything again um <laughs> so we're still racing behind keegan which is i, I mean honestly i have i like i think i said before i have full respect for the kid yeah um i love racing with him behind him yeah uh going into leadville i definitely trained a little bit differently trying mm -hmm. to figure out what it took to climb with keegan up columbine which is the mm -hmm. big climb at the back, mm -hmm. back end of the course it's about seven yeah. miles long takes about an hour mm. um it didn't work so i i don't you know it is what it is <laughs> yeah um I think it's hard coming off a bit of a lackluster beginning of the season mm -hmm. to feel like you're in a great place. Yeah. And going into quote unquote, my altitude camp moment where you have like a, a bit of time off or mm -hmm. away, away from racing. 
Mm-hmm. Like it's the longest period of time I have away from racing, even though it's a training camp, it's like almost a full four weeks without anything else. I just stay and train and can focus. Nice. Um, and I think I just went into that with a little bit different mindset um, mm-hmm. that was more focused on, Hey, let's be in the best possible shape mentally we can going into the end of the season. Yeah. Um, because I think the more this gravel mountain bike space grows in the U S uh, the more people forget how hard it is to be really good and sharp in October. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Talking about the mental aspect of it. I mean, that is, that is such a huge piece. Do you have tools that you use, like, whether it's like podcasts, books, therapists, <laughs> do you use any of those things? Uh, not really. Self-talk. Um, I've always <laughs> been a, yeah, I mean, self-talk for sure. I've always been a, a glass half full person. I've always been a person that uh, has just in my way, seen the world as a positive or having another path if one path yeah. ends. Um, awesome. I feel like I use, like, I've definitely like, I remember in high school, like just watching on repeat motivational videos, like whether Ooh. it was like, I don't know if anyone remembers like versus it was a TV channel, oh, no. but they had a really motivating, like 30 second ad. Oh my gosh. It was like, it's you versus them. It's you. And, <laughs> um, and so I like, there's a, there's a moment this year where things are going wrong. I kind of fell back into that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But definitely podcasts and and mm-hmm. autobiography books. I think cool. yeah. figuring out how someone else who's been in a similar position worked through mm-hmm. their mm-hmm. situations, uh, even if there's a different sport or a different um, time in life, yeah, has always helped. Um, so that's always been my biggest, I feel like, ability is being able to compartmentalize and then go and figure out the best way forward for myself. Nice. Do you have any favorite autobiographies? My favorite still to this day that I've read a couple times is Apollo Onos. Okay. Uh, it's written. I have not read it. Somewhat poorly. Like I wouldn't okay. say like it was written by him. So it's not like a yeah. work of art. Um, but there's just some crazy moments that makes you realize like kind of what a lot of people go through to be mm-hmm. a champion. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of things that I wouldn't ever want in my life. Those sacrifice. Like hey, there's a moment where his dad talks about, I think he's 11 years old and he finishes fourth at nationals. Mm-hmm. And his dad takes him to a cabin, family cabin, and mm-hmm. buys groceries on the way and says, hey, call me when you figure out what you want to do with your life. Oh and you're like, gosh. holy crap. Uh, oh first off, that might not be allowed in today's era. <laughs> yeah. um, but secondly, like it's just, it is a reality of, you know, I have a lot of parents ask me now, how far did your parents push you? Mm-hmm. And I, the hard answer to them is your kid at 15 or 16 has to be willing to sacrifice without you pushing them. You can mm-hmm. help, you know, Mm-hmm. elevate their discipline but the reality is they have to be willing to say okay i'm going to sacrifice xyz because mm-hmm. this is really fun even though it sucks at times yeah and i there's not many kids who want to do that in high school and yeah. i completely understand it um, yeah. but that's i think you know i think cycling is a niche sport but the same as track and field or anything else you can move on to skiing or mm tennis you Mm -hmm. have to sacrifice at some point and usually unfortunately that sacrifice is when you're younger interesting that makes me think i just saw um a reel on instagram by dr huberman and he was talking about a study where they did on kids and they were talking about different forms of um like validation and it was like if the parents said more things like wow you worked really hard for this versus um kind of like great job you're so smart um that the kids who did the like got the validation of like you worked really hard kind of form of validation performed better at repeat tests um so yeah and it's true and I look back and it's one of those things that like I have two brothers we are vastly different we all grew up very competitively we all do very different things uh only one of us went to college but I think now Mm -hmm. nowadays is quite a weird thing to be to to have a path in life and feel validated without going mm-hmm. to school is yeah. hard for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I was talking about it to an interview interview the other day. Um, it was like, my dad kind of just set this precedent of like, I had, I grew up with like this chip on my shoulder racing, mm-hmm. whether it was bike racing or anything else that was like, mm-hmm. you're in Michigan, you know, you're not as good as the kids at altitude in Colorado mm-hmm. or Utah or California. They have warm <laughs> weather. They can do all the training. Mm-hmm. And he just like, he wouldn't incite anger, but he'd incite this like, yeah, go, go out and ride in the cold with some weights on your bike and just do it. Yeah. And your growth from there is better than their growth, no matter what they're doing. And I think it wasn't like a competitive against a certain person or you're Mm -hmm. better than somebody. It was just, you're doing more. If you go do this, you're doing more. And I think it just, it created this work ethic inside of me that 
I don't think school ever would have taught me. Yeah. That's awesome. And it trained yeah. you to carry Willie on your back. <laughs> there we go. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks dad. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. He was preparing yeah. you for your future. Um, yeah. that's so rad. Um, yeah. The mental piece I think is always so fascinating to talk about because everybody has their own things. I think that they've learned to, um, kind of like tell themselves over time or goodness, I've had, you know, many clients come to me who've worked with sports psychologists and, mm -hmm. you know, get the race nerves and all that stuff or during race, um, you know, something goes wrong or you get a flat and it's like, oh shoot, now I'm behind the pack and I'm never going to make my, you know, the, the wheels start mm -hmm. spiraling. <laughs> so having yeah. those tools is, is definitely helpful. Um, talking about the training camp, was that back in April that you're talking about you're alt at altitude or was that leading up to Leadville? Leading up to Leadville was okay. the one I, but I did too. So usually mm. February ish, mm. Mm. get out of okay. the cold and go yeah. do a training camp somewhere in the sun. The mm. last two years has been Tucson. Yeah. Um, I would arguably say it's the best weather in the world in February. <laughs> um, and then usually before Leadville, because it's so high, um, obviously we're at some kind of altitude. I live in Boulder, so it's mm -hmm. 5,500 feet. Um, but Leadville starting at 10, two and climbing mm -hmm. up to 12, five. Um, mm -hmm. It's quite unique. Mm -hmm. So I usually go and do a camp around 8,000, 8,500 um, wow. for around three weeks. Goodness. Yeah. That's great. So yeah. I I think I forgot that. So you reside now in Boulder for the mm -hmm. majority of the year. Okay. Yeah. And so have like residing in Boulder and then doing, I mean, it's great. You're in Colorado for these two races. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so what do you feel like, because those are kind of like in your state, in your neck of the woods, in a sense, like, do you feel more comfortable approaching those? Are you able to ride those trails more often or like, are they how far from you or? Um, yeah, not really. I just okay. feel like the season's so busy or that yeah. like, you want to say like altitude that I've learned for myself is like, can't miss more than eight hours. So like, that means if you're going down to race or something like mm -hmm. get out, get back. And so it's hard mm -hmm. to go spend time doing other things or seeing other places. Mm -hmm. Um, steamboat was my first time ever racing and ever being there. So that mm -hmm. was, I had never uh, ever been around it. Mm -hmm. Um, Leadville, uh, that project that I run called from the ground up, we mm -hmm. do as, uh, like preview of the course in, yeah. in like over July 4th. Okay. So every year I'll usually see it like six weeks out from the race. Um, nice. not, not per se at training speed or mm -hmm. racing speed, yeah. but I still get to see the course and it's usually plenty. Was there snow in July? Uh, yeah, we didn't go all the way up at, oh, the, okay. at the top, the turnaround. Yeah, we got yeah. turned around about half a mile. So yeah, there's still snow. Goodness, yeah. And this year's conditions for was it Leadville were moderate, right? It was pretty comfortable. Like everybody was in long sleeves. It looked like. Yeah, this year for Leadville was like tacky. It was like probably the best weather you're gonna get. It wasn't Sweet. hot. Yeah, it was kind of a little bit of rain in the air, but in the morning. Yeah. Um, and then you just like. A lot of people aren't worried about getting down the hills because the dirt's just a little more sticky. Nice. Um, yeah, I heard that. I heard that the other day. They, the most most belt buckles have had to get out in the last ten years. Oh wow! You know, a lot of people finished, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. The conditions matter for sure. I've, yeah. I've goodness, I've too many. I've heard too many people with the Strava Strava <laughs> KOMs and QOM. They'll go out on sections on particular like t type of days, right? Where it's like maybe it rained like a couple days ago. It's tacky. It's cool still. They can go yeah. get their KOM. I um, I love that about Strava. Strava's yeah. the Strava's the best <laughs> because you just if you're having a down day, just go pick yeah. a tailwind KOM. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if the conditions play a huge role. You should have to list that. I mean, they do do temperature and all that stuff, right? In Strava. But, yeah. 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 But I still think it's funny. Like yeah. if I get like, if I, I still, you know, obviously I covet a lot of my home KOMs in Michigan and I'll get it, like I'll mark it and it will not mm -hmm. leave my inbox till I go home. Oh, and yes. like, even with a shitty snowy day <laughs> around Thanksgiving, I'm still like yeah. going out trying to take this KOM oh my back, goodness. Yeah, which is ridiculous. Yeah. But. That's so funny. Yeah. The, the KOM crushers and the QOM crushers. It's, you can tell when there's people going for them too on the weekends, like we ride with the group and we're just super cash yeah. and you just see somebody just slamming and just like sending it over the little water bars. And we're like, they're going for a KOM for sure. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I think it's because I'm competitive, but I like that Strava can do all that. Right. Like Strava yeah. can be my grandmother can stay track, like figure out where I am oh, in the world awesome. or yeah. like I can be racing my friend who yeah. raced it who was on this same piece of road three years yeah. ago. Yes. I don't know. I yeah. think it's kind of fun. 
it is cool. It is really cool. And then the, even just the mapping component yeah. too, to like do your stuff. It's so nice. Yeah. The heat map. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So with prep for, again, already residing at altitude, is that where you were coming from to, to like, yeah, was from- your, okay. Yeah. Um, so going up for something like Leadville and then a week later having steamboat, are you doing, since you already live with, like at altitude, are you doing any iron supplementation and prep or any of that kind of stuff? I was actually just talking to someone that, someone about this the other day because I started taking iron when I was up at a, at higher altitude than Boulder, um, mm-hmm. just because like it's not like I had a blood test. It's just one of those right. things you kind of know, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I kind of had wish I had a blood test. Um, mm-hmm. so we were actually like looking at lab core, different things like that. Nice. Um. But yeah, in between, I didn't really. I wouldn't say I stayed on it or anything. I, mm-hmm. for better or worse, coming off Leadville was like that mental relaxation where I was like, yeah. that was an awesome result. Uh, first of the mortals behind Keegan. Um, <laughs> and I kind of just like, I didn't let off the gas, but I definitely wasn't like fully focused. Um, okay. I kind of just, you know, I'm going to go and have a really fun weekend in Steamboat. It's my mm-hmm. first time there. I'm going to try to figure it out. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do all the homework I can do and yeah. be on the best bike I can. Mm-hmm. Um, but that if things don't go right this weekend, they went right last weekend and that's how yeah. bike racing goes. And I think that yeah. mindset, I can't go into every race thinking everything has to go perfectly because mm-hmm. then when it doesn't, it's really daunting. Totally. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so I think it's just a little different mindset and it was more for me focused on like, okay, how did I come off Leadville? Um, mm-hmm. Leadville for me is very taxing. Mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of sleep because I don't tip it like with from the ground up in my own racing Mm -hmm. it's typically like four to five hours of sleep a night yeah Um, wow yeah I think like I got home and I got home on Sunday and on Monday I think I slept for like 12 hours 12 hours and I like yeah yeah. can you tell the listeners about from the ground up yeah Um, so from the ground up is a project a friend and I started during COVID Um, this was its third year and it's main focus is trying to make cycling more accessible and less intimidating. Um, so we have three this year, five, um, but three to five people come in who've never raced a bike before, never ridden a bike before, um, competitively and give them the tools and everything they need to take on the hardest mountain bike race in the nation, which we think is Leadville 100, Mm. uh, in five and a half months, which is theoretically and probably impossible. Oh goodness. Um, and the point of it is we didn't think pros are very good at talking to amateurs. There's too much of a space gap there. Oh, okay. And so how can you teach, how can you give an amateur everything they need up close and hopefully they share that knowledge and that grows between mm-hmm. friends. Um, that if you get 20 amateurs together, one person learned how to change a tube, one person mm-hmm. learned how to corner, one person's learned how to, um, you know, I don't know, handle the bike through trees or yeah. jump and nice it's easier to teach each other as opposed to just feeling like you're lost in the woods. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. So with Leadville and prepping people for that kind of stuff, what do you think is the hardest section of the course for you personally? For me personally? Yeah. Probably. Probably the same as people taking on the race for the first time coming from the road is probably still a lot of the descents. Okay. Um, yeah. I've gotten a percentage better every year. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. I lose less time. Nice. Um, but that's always going to be the kind of the, my Achilles heel. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And is it, is it the technical aspect of the descent? That you're, you're referring yeah. To? And Leadville, like for a normal person, like, so the first year from the ground up, we started them on super light hard tails with mm-hmm. high posts, which means no dropper. Oh um, yeah. That's tricky. And nobody finished um the second year we did the same thing but with a dropper Mm. nobody finished obviously this is not exact exact representation but Mm -hmm. this year we gave them 130 bikes 130 millimeters of travel in the front and the back Uh which is quite a lot for cross-country racing yeah we had three people finish and all five made it past where anyone ever made it and the point of that is that the bikes that i think the pros are running to Mm -hmm. go as fast as we are uphill are not the bikes you should run it's not fun it's yeah. just suffering. Yeah. Um, and so descending on that for me is quite sketchy. It's mm. very small tires. Mm-hmm. You really have to try to avoid all the rocks because you're running mm-hmm. no sidewall mm-hmm. protection and you're running. Yeah. 
a bike that's just very skittish because it's yeah. so light it's like yeah. less than 20 pounds mm-hmm. um so it's kind of all these things together that i think make it harder if i was riding a bike that was best downhill i might not be there uphill so it's right. finding that line between yes like where where where's the balance um totally on the result Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That could be a good bike for, I mean, so many different sections of the course could be a different bike, right? Yeah, so exactly. Goodness. Um, yeah. You got to find that like sweet spot that, that makes up for the most of it. Um, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think about that too. The skinny, the smaller tires and no sidewall that, and yeah, descending that's, that's a whole different ball yeah. game. Goodness. Makes it fun. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> makes it fun. Um, so do you ever do nutrition stuff too with the ground up people? Do you help like give them fueling tips for stuff of that yeah. duration and out altitude? For sure. Um, yeah. We've Great. kind of like my co-founder and I have kind of set ourselves up as the shoulders to cry on mm. more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so we bring in kind of like every sponsor brings in somebody of value in a category. Nice. So like yeah. Wahoo has always done, obviously they provide the trainers and the head units, mm. mm-hmm. but moreover, more importantly, they provide coaching. Nice. Um, yeah who has provided you know their help but they also provided yeah. somebody to help with them and then those together you know usually in that july period they'll come to wahoo and do uh like carbohydrate testing and sweat nice. testing so they get as much information as they want we've mm-hmm. had people who are like overwhelmed by it because mm-hmm. there's a lot going on yeah um we have people who have loved it and they're just kind of yeah. know, okay this is what i have to eat because mm-hmm. they look at a pro and this is kind of the conversation from the ground up They're like, oh, wow, Lexi's doing 125 grams of carbs an hour. Mm. That's what I have to do. Mm. And at the speed they're moving, it's not, you can't mm-hmm. do that for four, 13 and yeah. a half hours. That's not sustainable. Right. So, yes. you know, they, they, they have data to support and says, okay, actually I only need to do 68 grams of carbs an hour. Like mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. optimal for me. Yeah. And even if they end up doing a little more in the beginning, a little less in the end, if they had doubled that, they probably would, would have started to have stomach issues or right. just not been able to tolerate it. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, the answer is yes. Uh, and it's also just hard to figure out every person's different. Um, yeah. So we usually give our insight, like, hey, this is what I do. These are the mm-hmm. foods. Moreover, these are the foods I use to mm-hmm. get to my calories. Mm-hmm. You have your own number. Figure out what you like to get there. Yeah. Um, and you definitely have a lot more because they're out there longer. I feel like they tend to lean a lot more toward real, some real food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So talking about products, what yeah. did you, was it the same kind of routine if we're talking about comparison between Leadville and Steamboat with products you were using during, or was there any difference there between those two? Not much difference, probably a little more like harder to eat foods, like mm-hmm. chews in a, in a bar at mm-hmm. steamboat because you could as yeah. opposed to leadville pretty flat on the whole time mm-hmm. um steamboat's also unique in that for some reason the front end of the black course the 142 mile course has decided that it's doable without stopping mm-hmm. and there's no hand ups at steamboat unlike leadville so oh, that okay. means we are starting a six hour race with 12 and a half pounds of water oh, because that's what someone deemed we should do um and that means if you're going to stop, you're not going to be in the race is the reality. Um, wow. So it's a, it's quite a game to figure out, you know, if I'm going to fill a pack with um, my calories, mm-hmm. that means I also need to carry a shit ton of water because that yeah. means you're not going to get any other liquid in. Right. Um, and so that's been probably the biggest experience for me. There's been a lot of races this year where somehow I've kind of um, not gotten flavor fatigue, but just like wanted plain water. So I've mm-hmm. leaned a lot more toward, toward like, just the far end of the spectrum, like Mm -hmm. super concentrated mix or water. Yeah. Um, So yeah, that's what I did. I think it was, is a liter and a half of scratch high carb Mm -hmm. in my back and then three 32 ounce bottles of plain water. Oh, okay. Um, And then a bunch of gel supplement. Yeah. And yeah, it's just, it's just crazy that you're doing, I mean, obviously we're still doing 142 miles, like this SBT is fast. So we're doing 142 Mm -hmm. miles and six hours but at the same time it's still like you're you're like why are we there's they put eight stations yeah. out here for a reason we could just right. stop and get everything oh we wanted. my goodness shoot um so total yeah. ounces of fluid what is you said three bottles and a bladder it was a two liter bladder uh one and a half one and a half okay yeah i'm trying to like bladder. i'm trying to do the comp calculations in my head Hold i think on. it's 1. like 1. 5 i know two liters is like 67 ounces that's so it's 
50 ounces plus i don't know if it's well, the calculators <laughs> yeah no it's like 140 ounces of fluid and that's that's all the water you drink in six hours yeah it's not a choice that's the thing yeah. that's the game like I think I took one hand, like you can't have support out there. They have mm-hmm. aid stations where someone's mm-hmm. like holding out a cup. It's like, I think mm-hmm. I took one like Dixie cup of Coke. Yeah. But, like other than that, you're on your own. So yes, yeah. that's, that's the funny thing about, uh, Steamboat isn't a choice. It's just right. it's pretty much how much are you dehydrating yourself to get to the finish? Yes. Like I literally chugged, like all the pictures of me at the finish are just me looking dead by a water cooler. I didn't even like stop to say how to Willie is straight to the water cooler. Oh. <laughs> Willie was so bummed. Yeah. Oh man. And then so Leadville is the opposite. Like yeah. we, it's so many little bottles. I'm mm. pretty much picking up a, a Musette bag with two bottles and a gel every pretty much 16, 17 miles. Okay. Wow. Um, the longest periods that turn around of the climb just time wise, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, it's probably like an hour and a half. So like okay. every hour and a half, you're picking out more bottles. Is that, can people stage wherever to support you or are there certain yeah. locations? Oh, nice. There's certain locations, yeah. but most of the time, because you want it to be at the, like you want to, you want to time it that you're with the people you're, you're with and they're all mm-hmm. doing it at the same time. Yeah. Um, usually it's in certain areas. Um, but yeah, like it's a big part of Leadville is bringing out someone who's going to be able to support you quick. Yeah. Like um, a good friend in Boulder, Kyle Fowler came out to help me this year. And him and uh, my mechanic from Envy, Derek Jensen, were literally driving way over the speed limit to get, we go so fast between two of the feed zones that this is a pro caravan and police are just like, go, 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 because it's it's impossible. Like the bikes almost beat the cars between these two feed zones 15 miles apart. Holy and smokes. so it's literally just like they rush up and they're usually there for three to five minutes and then yeah. they hand the bag and sprint back. Goodness. It's That's wild. But you have to have your person because yeah. like yeah. you rely on your nutrition. Yeah. That sounds like a fun planning situation. <laughs> like a ADD, like type A personality is like, yeah. yes. <laughs> like, yeah. How yeah. are we going to solve this? Um, that's so, yeah, that's great. So with the steamboat situation, no nutrition or sorry, no fluid pass offs or nutrition pass offs, yep. but math coming out to 23.3 ounces per hour, roughly if we're doing a six hour race. And then in Leadville from an altitude perspective, steamboat versus Leadville, are they different much? Steamboat, or? Yeah. Steamboat starts and doesn't go as high. Gotcha. Steamboat's quite a bit for, I would say it's dark place. I think it starts 2000, 2,500 feet lower okay. and maybe only goes up to 85 okay. and Leadville goes up, starts at 10 and goes up to 12, five. So it's a lot higher. Okay. Well, that's good. You can get more water for that one. Yeah. <laughs> and it was cooler that day too. Yeah. So it was, it was warmer at Steamboat um, than at Leadville yeah. this year as well. Yeah. Goodness. Um, yeah. And I also just like, I usually always start with a start bottle. It always changes, but I usually have to slam a bottle in that last 10 minutes before mm-hmm. the start. Um, mm-hmm. Whether it's, you know, full of a lot more salt or whether it's full of a lot more carbs, depending on how I think the day is going to start. Yeah. Um, just so that in the chaos of the day, if you forget a little bit, you have that excess to start with. Mm-hmm. And the only yeah. downside is you might have to pee. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness. So, and do you, do you use that as a gauge? Cause this is a question I, I get, or I hear from uh, clients often is, well, I drank this much, but I like never peed in six hours or I drank this much and I had to pee every two hours. Not as a gauge. Cause like, it really depends on the day to me. Yeah. Like yeah, steamboat. I was like, God dang it. I got to pee. I like, I pissed all over my shoe like three times. <laughs> I was just like, the race was so on all day. Yeah, yeah. And I, it was just one of those things. I was like, this is like, I, I must've just not done one more pee. And like, that's the difference. Um, but that's yeah, I think skill that, in I, and of yeah. itself. <laughs> peeing on your shoe. I'm not sure that's a skill, but peeing, I guess is a skill. So for some people <laughs> at 30 longer. miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Goodness. Um, uh, guys descending. have it easier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. I know my, my female athletes have a hard time getting and runners yeah. too, like getting and just like doing that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so with that too, I mean, kind of upside your lightning, your the weight that you're moving, right. If yeah. you're having to pee, but yeah, I mean, too, with the altitude, I've always heard as well that, um, elevation can be a diuretic as well. Like if you're not used to it, so it can make you pee up, you know, more fluids, yeah. hence the dehydration that and but... cold weather for me, cold weather will get me every time. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness. That makes sense. So talk to us about what, what, are, what's going on from a nutrition, a rest, a mobility, a supplement, a nutrition perspective, you come off Leadville. 
Um, and for our listeners, second place finish, right? Yeah. Slammed it. And then it's we a have good sprint. A, yeah. Send you the, I'll send you the video. There's a highlight yeah. from a helicopter. My best sprint oh, ever. Oh, sweet. Yes. Yeah awesome yeah we'll put that we'll link that yeah. for sure um and then you have what six days seven days before you go race yeah i mean I, I i drove to steamboat we drove to steamboat wednesday so like three days later but yeah okay so what's going on from a recovery focus perspective during that time yeah i think you i'll start with the lead into leadville um i think we talked about this before it's just kind of like a yucky thing to say but like my my like hey i've eaten enough is that I'm taking number two the night before yeah. the race. Okay, good, um, yeah. But so I, all all those three days going in, um, Leadville, I was very serious about uh, kind of the low fiber thing mm-hmm. I usually do that kind of, yep. for me, depends on where I am, but it's a one and a half to two and a half kilo drop, which is quite mm-hmm. a bit. Yeah. Um, so Leadville, I was pretty like low fiber all the way mm-hmm. in from like Wednesday to Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, just a lot of simple carbs, white mm-hmm. rice, pasta, potatoes, mm-hmm. um, and then some kind of protein. Um, mm-hmm. But if I like, I'd pretty much just, I just become a garbage can. If it's like, oh, I'm going to eat a Rice Krispie. I'm just going to eat a big Rice Krispie. Like it's just yeah. getting as many, whenever you're hungry, get the calories in. Yeah. Um, because you're going to use it on that day, no matter mm-hmm. how you feel. Um, so so do, were you just saying too, you notice when you cut out fiber, you, your body weight drops one and a half to two kilos. Yeah. Just over three Even, days. It just, it becomes, it's just a water weight thing. Your body stops having to digest the fiber, more complex. But, you're, you, but you're consuming so many carbs and you're not noticing any fluid retention with that. No. Interesting. I, in the first couple of days. Yeah. But that yeah. by, by day three. No. Yeah. Huh. Um, and it's like, that's really well used in the road. Yeah. The problem is with that you can't do it back to back. You can't do it yeah. consistently, right? Your body does not. It's how you get yeah. sick. It's how your body yeah. just stops working correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, so that going into Leadville was like, okay, that was, that was the A race or the mm-hmm. race I was focused more on. Um, finished Leadville and was obviously hungry and kind of just trying to rehydrate, honestly, after Leadville. Cause that's the yeah. hardest thing on the, on these races. Even if you're getting a bottle every hour, mm-hmm. almost always overdoing it. Um, yeah. especially at altitude. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had like a massive lactic headache and was just mm-hmm. kind of like pretty much finished and took Advil and started drinking water. Everyone mm-hmm. was like offering you a beer and you're like, I don't know how people drink beer after races. Oh, yeah. I can't do it right now. I, I hear you on that one. <laughs> um, even yeah. Uh, and then kind of moving past Leadville came back Sunday. I, I maybe went out with friends, like kind of had a, a nice meal out in the town um, and kind of just continued that. Um, mm-hmm. I think I had one or two alcoholic drinks, but otherwise like I, I'm kind of a very type A person. I'm either mm-hmm. going hard or not drinking. Um, yeah. So it's hard to find a middle ground for myself. <laughs> um, or I'll, I'll rephrase that. I'm either dancing or not dancing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah. And then kind of leading in, like I knew we were going to leave Wednesday or we leave Wednesday. Monday was a very like Sunday, Monday, like all, all I want after the no fiber thing is like mm-hmm. big salads, like usually yeah. eating more, but I'm just like, I need fiber. I need crunch yes. in my life. Yes. Um, and so that's kind of how it is going through and, going into steamboat i wasn't gonna do the low fiber thing again mm-hmm. um it's just like I, it i my body struggles doing that back-to-back weekends but also yeah. i just I, it's hard to mentally do that you you ruin yeah. kind of the fun of going to restaurants or different places mm-hmm. um and so that mindset going to steamboat was quite different obviously um mm-hmm. different bike prepared just kind of pack the car um it's nice that both races like you said are within driving distance mm-hmm. um so we packed up and i just kind of went in with this mindset of I'm going to go figure out what the race is like, I'm going to go preview what I can do my homework. And then that's it. Um, I think the only thing that was really similar nutrition wise in between them was the on the bike nutrition. Mm, um, mm-hmm. the rest of it, I think like, you know, my, my pre night routine kind of stayed the same. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's always a, a carb and a protein, but you could say that about anything. Um, yeah. and so pretty much ate a lot the night before. And then woke up the next morning and did, did what I did. Had my start bottle, um, kind of leaned definitely more toward hydration, uh, to start a steamboat, um, a lot more sodium just cause I knew I wasn't going to get very much mm-hmm. liquid. Um, and then as the day progressed, kind of just tried to more think about what I had on my back as timing, as opposed to slamming bottles, cause mm-hmm. when you know, you're going to drink less than you need to it's definitely about just dosing it as opposed to being like, Oh shit, yeah. I have only this much left. I'm going to save it. Like that's not how this works. Um, yeah. So it was a lot more about, Hey, trying to figure out how much I have in my pack. Okay. Mm-hmm. I finished one bottle. We're 
we're halfway through. I have one and a half bottles left and half my pack. I think we're pretty mm-hmm. good. Like just trying to hit the numbers. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then the last 25 miles sucked and I just was dehydrated and made it. Oh, but, shoot. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's kind of, I think everybody at some point was at, in that place. From a a fluid loss perspective, are you doing, nowadays we have the ability to sweat test and we have the ability to, well, tools are coming out for intentional gut training and fluid and all that stuff, but you can absolutely train to tolerate some level of dehydration. Do you intentionally restrict fluids in training in prep for something where you know you won't be able to hit what you need? intentionally no just being bad okay. at drinking on like two and a half hour rides yeah <laughs> I, like, i'm pulling into a well. workout i'm great at it right yeah. i'm like hey i need to get this workout i'm gonna eat well i'm gonna drink well i'm gonna get home i'm gonna have my taco milk and my recovery shake and it's gonna like if i go on like a two and a half hour like fun day with willie god i'm bad at it i like oh i'm i'm thirsty i haven't drank in two hours in the yeah. last half hour drink 30 ounces of yeah. water um so i think just even the way that the efficiency of people who train a lot. I think Mm -hmm. I get to a point where my gut is trained and I've kind of found a place where I can get to dehydration without losing too much. Mm -hmm. Um, That being said, I like, I, there's been a couple races this year where I've been like, I think I pushed it too hard, went Mm -hmm. a little too far. Like even Foco Fondo this year, um, the race I just kind of went down and did um, mid July from altitude camp. Mm -hmm. And I think it was coming from altitude camp. It was mid big block. Um, it, it was super hot and, mm. um, I went solo super early, like a hundred K to go. And it was just one of those days where I was like, it was a shell of myself. Um, and you yeah. finished because you have to, but you're like, that wasn't really great. Yeah. Um, and I think it took me a good bit to recover from it. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously you can always look at the positive side of things. Like I think it pushed heat adaption quite far. Mm-hmm. Um, like yeah. I got back from that and the fact that I didn't feel horrible proves mm-hmm. that I was somewhat heat adapted, even if yeah. my body was struggling on that day. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't, I wouldn't say I purposely ever trained to that cause I'd rather just race well. And I think there's a, there's going to be long-term effects of consistent dehydration. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So are you still, um, kind of jumping back a little bit to the prep before steamboat as well? So still keeping color, not necessarily doing a true like fiber cut or anything like that, but are you doing extra carbs or anything like that intentionally or pretty much just eating everything? I okay. Can still, yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's kind of the name of the game for these mm-hmm. races. I think as we start to get toward races that are less than hundred miles or mm-hmm. four and a half, four hours mm-hmm. that changes, mm-hmm. but a race that's six hours, uh, mm-hmm. there's no you're not keeping up no matter yeah. how much you're eating. You're eating 130 grams of carbs an hour. That's great. But you're, maybe you're not drinking enough or you're not. Yeah. So it's really just trying to always have a water bottle in my hand, always have it finished and always mm-hmm. be, you know, just snacking. Yeah. Um, and I think that kind of leads into the, just the overall getting through a race, like neither Leadville nor Steamboat. People keep thinking I'm lying about this, but like, I didn't feel great either day. Um, mm-hmm. and I just kind of focus on the things I could do on those mm-hmm. given days. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of that getting through better than other people probably comes down to before the race even started. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a yeah. lot of guys do it well, but I think it's also sometimes overthought and mm-hmm. like, I just, I, I don't, I don't think about it. It's not like, oh, I need to have rice. It's like, oh, well, there's a piece of chicken and a, I don't know, a- anything, right? Like yeah. bread. I'll just yeah. eat bread. But cool. I'm hungry and there's bread here. Um, yeah. It doesn't have to be pretty. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And eggs and rice for breakfast. Is that still the, I love that. I use that at unbound and it was, I could eat like loads of that. I realized I'm like, I can put this down. Like this is no problem. (laughs) And you just change it up a little bit. Like even like when I got sick, like I had a crap ton before before Mm. before both, but like I kind of got sick of an SBT and you just like, Mm. I went from like having the eggs and, and a little bit of butter and salt to like, I think I put like banana and peanut butter in there. Like you can change it so easily into like what you're yeah. like, ah, I need to go. I def- definitely yeah. need a little more. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's just, yeah, it's just a nice, nice vehicle for whatever yes. taste you're putting in your mouth. Yes, definitely. Yeah. It works out well. goes down smooth. Um, yeah, that's great. And so, so Steamboat came in third. Yeah. Um, get, you said you were feeling great on both days. Is there a race? Like, do you ever feel great going into any of your races? Yeah. I just haven't felt myself this year, like fully yeah. like, wow, I'm on top of it. Um, yeah. but that's not to say like, 
very obviously I'm strong enough. Um, mm-hmm. The fields are better than they ever have been um, mm-hmm. this year. And I think I've just been, I, I'm i hoping, knocking mm-hmm. on wood, that I think I'm just still still getting to that gap. And, the, you know, these next races are going to see that growth. I'm going to feel like yeah. I'm on top of it, you know, for three of them. Yeah. Um, I think for most of us, our athletic careers, we have certain days that feel great. And most mm-hmm. of the days are mundane. Yeah. Um, and I guess that that was the point is they mm-hmm. were spectacular results. And I guess mm-hmm. my point was they were mundane days in terms of how I felt. Um, that's not always what you train for, but sometimes yeah. it just happens. Yeah. I mean, mean, it's always still going to race. Yeah. I mean, to take that to that performance, that environment and that kind of not feeling great. Mm -hmm. Imagine when you are feeling great. Yeah. Just that's the goal. Maybe, maybe he, maybe Keegan's only 10 minutes ahead, not 25. Exactly. There you go. (laughs) Yeah. What is that kid eating? Um, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> he's a beast he's an absolute beast <laughs> he is a beast um so let's see um we're getting a little close on time but um yeah. i um so recovery from steamboat what is that is that still craving the color do you have an appetite after with that level of dehydration that set in initially like what is that like it's a lot of a lot of fluids yeah. after um but yeah i feel like i didn't do the fiber thing as much so i'm just kind of just eat normally um yeah. and I went out to a nice restaurant after i think this an array of mm-hmm. yummy things, nice. crust, you know, Brussels sprouts and yeah. bread. And I think I got a burger and, you know, just kind of mix Good. it up. Yeah. That's great. And, um, you mentioned the bladder thing too. I, I get from a lot of clients, like they don't know when they're racing, they'll be like, well, I, I didn't know how much like I drank for my bladder or how much I had left. How do you gauge that? You mentioned you did the kind of like arm behind the back, like kind of pick it up, give it a squeeze kind of is what it looked yeah. like. Is that kind of what you're doing? But also, yeah, but also it's just not empty till it's empty. So yeah. like at some point, like <laughs> once I get past halfway, I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. I got gels in my pocket. If I finish yeah. this early, I finish this early. Like pack's not, it's 300 grams of carbs. I'm mm-hmm. three hours into the race. Yeah. So like, yeah. I tend to just, you want to get that weight off your back, obviously. Mm-hmm. And like, once I get past a point where like, I should have drink it, mm. start drinking it consistently. Like, right. and it's not gone till it's gone. When yeah. you're like, oh, yeah. I think, I think I have a little left. You probably don't. Yeah. You probably have a lot yeah. left. Yeah, exactly. Um, like a lot of people finish and they're like, oh, I thought I was done. And they have half their pack left. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so I think like, literally I'll like, oh, it's done. And I'll come back and I'll suck again, like sh- shake it around and suck again. I'm like, oh, there's still more there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's just really finishing it. And you'll know, you'll like, yeah. you'll be like, wow, that's, that's what it feels like empty. That's light. Yeah. Um, versus there yes. being like a third of it left. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's helpful for a lot of people out there too, with the, the bladders are just so popular right now with the, it's easy. you need them. Yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, a lot of people don't know how to gauge how much they're sipping and how much they've gone through and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah. I think that that is helpful and you're sipping just like, you don't have a timer running, right. Or are you looking at mileage or anything like that? Or you're just, yeah, it depends on the race. Unbound a lot mileage, like every mm. five, every five mile like mm-hmm. five, 10, 15, mm-hmm. I would, sorry, like five, 15, 25. Mm-hmm. I was drinking five big sips okay, and every yeah. mile I was drinking 10 big sips. Undown's oh, wow. unique in that, like it's the feed zone every 80 miles pretty much. Mm-hmm. And so like, it's just dire that you get yeah. through it. It's a contest. Yeah. It's an eating contest. Um, yeah. And so it's like, if I finished early, I finished early. Who cares? It like it's steamboat. I'm trying to kind of balance it um mm-hmm. but i'm bound you're just like yeah in in less than two hours i need to finish 300 grams of carbs like it's <laughs> you know there's no there's no game there it's just like yeah so um but then there's definitely days where i've been like i i just don't feel like i'm mentally there i'm not on eating and mm-hmm. i focus mm-hmm. more on just either time or anything else passing by yeah or just like hey every corner i take i'm gonna drink like mm-hmm. you can base it off anything you see or like every yeah. person, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, every person I see, every cyclist I see, or everyone I pass, I'm going to take one sip. Like there you go. it's, I think it's just the way on a certain day you need to be reminded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I somehow get, I weirdly get angry at my alerts on my computer. I'm like, I just drank. Don't tell me what to do. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. All the gadgets these days, like people have been telling me, like, I think Gar- Garmin might be one of them where it's like, makes me kind of feel, but they'll say something. It's like, man, that makes me feel kind of bad about myself. <laughs> like yeah. whatever their suggestions are. Um, I don't know if it's like lack of sleep or overtraining or something, but, or maybe not training hard enough when you thought you did something like Having that. Having foster puppies. Yeah. 
I can hear the mom whining right now. Um, okay. I'll dive into our audience questions because there's a lot of fun ones in there. Cool. So we had, um, how do you keep a good relationship with food? Uh, I think that starts beginning of the year. Like even, you know, people ask how I race Leadville having like the project going at the same time. Mm -hmm. You make decisions and then you don't look back on them. Mm -hmm. Like I think as athletes or competitive people, we're all pretty good at that. Yeah. And that's your decision with food. You're either going to get on a scale every day mm -hmm. um, and it's a positive or negative impact on yourself. Mm -hmm. Getting on a scale every day isn't, isn't the negative thing. It's how mm -hmm. you feel afterwards. Yeah. Um, the only time I consistently weighed myself was at altitude camp because mm -hmm. I was just, it's a water retention. Um, yeah. For me, it's not about, is it, am I trending lower or higher? Obviously, mm -hmm. if I'm training that hard, I'm probably trending lower. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, hey, I just finished a five hour ride in 98 degrees. Mm. Did I lose six yeah. pounds of water? Did I lose three pounds mm. of water? Did I lose a pound of water? <laughs> um, but you can get on and you can be, you can still think, oh, wow, I need to lose a half pound. Or you can mm -hmm. say, this is a healthy relationship with what I'm doing. And it, the correlation with food is what I need to move forward as opposed to have the scale change. Yeah. Um, and so for me, I very much just focus on each day creating foods I want to eat mm -hmm. um, and trying to tie them into what's healthy, right? Like yeah. French toast is one of my favorites on a big hard day. Nice. It has protein, it yeah. has carbs. Um, I could eat a whole, whole loaf and like, <laughs> it is what it is, right? I'm going to go awesome. do a hard ride. Um, but then, you know, on another day, I'm like, okay, it's, it's a, it's an easier day. I want to make something more fun. I don't need a loaf of French toast. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a couple eggs and have a bagel. Yeah. Like, um, I think it's about how excited you are to make things mm -hmm. that are, that are healthy and fit into what your schedule entails. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I love that. And then, um, let's see, we had, I think we kind of went a little bit into this, but it says, does your plan, and I'm not sure if they mean nutrition or training plan change based on elevation or distance for a race. I would imagine. Yes. Nutrition definitely changes for distance for a race. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll rapid fire these. Um, yeah. Training definitely changes. Um, mm -hmm. nutrition mostly stays the same. Mm -hmm. Like I won't ever try to go over 130 grams of carbs an hour. Yeah. I mostly won't ever be under, under 100, just how mm -hmm. hard we race. Yeah. Um, it just changes versus how much I have to take. Um, mm. training plan changes a little bit. Um, yeah. A lot of the stuff we just did was very endurance based and at altitude, how efficient you can be. Mm -hmm. Um, and pretty much the switch over SBT is pretty much how hard can you go? A lot of short efforts, VO2 stuff. Um, and that usually means you're eating about the same amount, but your body has to process it in a different way. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. All right. Well, like I said, rapid fire. Um, how many candy bars do you eat daily with <laughs> nu nougat or without? <laughs> uh, this person, whoever it is, knows yeah. that I have a guilty pleasure and it's just <laughs> any type of sugar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my go-to is actually not a candy bar. I love Kit Kats, but my go-to is mm. definitely like gummy candy. Um, oh yeah. Like Scandinavian swimmers from Trader Joe's or uh, gummy bears or anything like that. That's awesome. Those are yeah. delicious. Um, okay. We definitely went through this one. What did you do between Leadville and SBT? Um, how did you prep for the race? Played with we my dog. That. Um, yes. And then the, all of the final one was when are you going to post another YouTube video? They are all coming. Uh, we, we, we've been behind. And so we kind of decided to do this thing where we're going to hold off and then just kind of post a bunch at once and let everyone go and binge. Nice. Um, yeah. Avery got a real job. And I got busy and Will Willie got busy. The real talent got busy, but they're coming. <laughs> Unbound. Awesome. We'll be last. We'll do Belgian Wolf Ride, Sea Otter, and Unbound should all come out in September. Awesome. And this is on your personal YouTube channel? Yeah. It's a, like called Alexi and Avery. Both of us. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Amazing. All right. And then um, do you want to lay back out your two truths and a lie for us one more time? Yes. The two truths and a lie. The first one I said was SPT was Willie's first race. Mm hmm um, I think the second one was I have seven more races in 2023, which in my opinion would be a lot. And Ooh, okay. <laughs> I, and the third one is I'm getting another wiener dog. Okay. So I thought the first one was a lie. Cause I feel like you maybe would have done something with Willie at this point, smaller beforehand. What was I right? Uh, the lie is that we're getting another wiener dog. No, <laughs> <laughs> I know everyone wanted me true. <laughs> Oh, I wanted to see the devil, devil Willie yeah. Wieners. It, it, it'll the it'll come. It'll yeah. come. Just not right now. 
yeah um, yeah you didn't really sell it if I was gonna yeah. get another wiener dog I'm sure yeah. it might have might have turned it down right yeah now. oh my goodness yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> well if you get just one and you already have on this train I think that's like different fostering yeah. seven puppies is a whole different ball game I'll tell you um all right well this has been fantastic always appreciate your time your knowledge um it's it's always super helpful I know our listeners learn tons so appreciate your time and then where can people find you on the socials and all that stuff at Alexi Vermeulen pretty much Perfect. everywhere and cool. i guess willie's is that sir willie the wiener yes so anyone i'll sell yeah. it there's a there was a meme the other day that said like people know you by your dog and like the amount of people that yell <laughs> willie to me is, oh, i mean it's cute but at yeah. some point you're like why am i answering to that yeah <laughs> that's great he's popular he's got a following yes, that's it's great good. i love amazing. it amazing uh well thank you again so much for joining yeah. us thanks for having me